Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Is everybody awake? Your first official morning as a college student. Woke up on campus. Isn't it awesome? Mom wasn't there to wake you up, but you still had to be up for a 9 o'clock class. Well, it's all good. So we appreciate you guys being here this morning. Um, my name is Kevin Peck. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center here. Um, I'm also an, a, uh, an adjunct uh, business uh, instructor here on campus. Um, so I, uh, I still associate with an 18-year-old mentality. So I get to, uh, to come and associate and, and spend a lot of time with you guys throughout the semester. So. Um, and this is Tracy O'Donnell. I'll let Tracy introduce herself. Hi, I work in the financial aid department, so if you have any questions about your scholarships or your Pell Grant funds, go ahead and stop by and anyone in our office can help you out. Cool. So today we're going to, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time today talking with you about time management, how to manage your time a little better, how to manage your money, right? I was talking to a father yesterday who had stopped by my office and uh, said, yeah, in about 40 minutes we're going to teach your kids how to manage their money. And he says, I've been trying to do that for 18 years. How are you going to do it in 40 minutes? Right? So today we're just going to kind of give you a few tips so we can make sure that when the middle of November hits and you're out of money, you're not having to eat uh, 39 cent ramen noodles and yellow death for the rest of the semester to, to get you through until, uh, until Christmas break. So, and then the, the last part of this, we're going to teach you how to be socially awesome. Are we okay with that? Yeah? All right. So anyway, so we're going to teach you kind of really how to make sure that you're, you're, you're maximizing everything that you're doing while you're here on campus. So you guys know, we're probably trying to figure out when you looked at your, at your schedule, you, you probably saw monstrepreneurship. What the heck is monstrepreneurship? Well, we know what the, defini de what the definition of an, um, of an entrepreneur is, right? An entrepreneur is somebody who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. Now you're thinking, well, I'm not an, entrep an entrepreneur, I'm a student, right? But you're not just a student. You're a Gila monster now. So now we have what's called a monstrepreneur. And a monstrepreneur is an EAC Gila monster who organizes and manages any endeavor, especially their education, usually with considerable initiative or risk. Is it a risk for you guys to be here? Could you guys be doing something else? Could we, didn't anybody give up a job to come to school? Yeah? Are we, are we losing a little bit of money here? It's what we call opportunity cost, right? We're exchanging what we're doing here for the possible opportunity of making more later. Okay, so there is some, some risk that we're taking by being here. All right, um, some doors may have closed in the hope that maybe some other doors are going to open up a little bit later for you. But we also need you guys to really take some initiative to make sure that you're successful with that. All right, mom and dad aren't here anymore. They're not going to wake you up in the mornings. Okay, maybe grandma's going to wake you up in the morning. But not everybody's going to wake you up in the morning. You're going to have to rely on your own alarm clock. Um, it's going to take now you being an adult. It's no longer high school. You're now adults, and we're going to treat you like adults. We're going to respect you like adults while you're here. Um, but we're also going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to do a lot of playing in the, in the process with that. So we want you guys to enjoy that time while you're here. So we'll let Tracy talk for a few minutes on, uh, on how to manage some time while you're here. Yeah, so if you want to make the most out of your experience at EAC, time management is a good way to do that because you want to make sure that you have balance. You don't want to um, be just focusing on social life and not school and grades, and you don't want to focus just on school and grades and not have that social life. So if you want to get the most out of your experience, make sure that you're finding that balance. And one of the most important skills that you can learn with time management is how to prioritize. So you want to learn how to look at the tasks that you have to do for that day or the activities for that day, and then rank them by importance. And there's an old saying by Mark Twain. I don't know, has anybody in here heard of Mark Twain? He's from the 1800s, but he's a famous author. He wrote books like, um, he wrote Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Prince and the Pauper. So Mark Twain used to say, if the first thing that you do in the morning is eat a frog, then nothing else bad is going to happen that day. Because, you know, think about it, eating a frog is pretty gross. So if that was the first thing that you did, the rest of your day is going to be easy. So take that analogy and apply it to when you wake up in the morning, the worst thing that you have to do that day or the most important thing that you have to do that day, get it done first. So if you have a test that day and you need to study, 
Study for your test first. Then the rest of the day is free for good things. If you have a paper that's due, write your paper first. Whatever, whatever is most important or maybe that thing that's most difficult, just get it done first. Eat that frog and then the rest of the day is gonna be easy. Time management, there's not one way to manage your time and block it out or one method or tool. You need to find what's gonna work for you. I like to use my cell phone because my cell phone has a calendar on it. So I like to put my activities and events on my cell phone and then it'll set off an alarm reminding me that I have somewhere to be or something to do. So that might work. Some people prefer to write it down on a planner or in a notebook. So if that works for you, get a notebook. We have some free planners available at the counselor's office and I think an admissions office. All over campus you can find free planners. So take advantage of that and just find what works for you and make sure that you write everything down. So I recently just got my bachelor's degree and I like to use Outlook. So what I did is on my Outlook calendar, every test that I had, I put on my calendar. Every big assignment that was due, I put on my calendar. And then at the beginning of the week, I could look at my calendar and see, okay, I've got a test. I need to plan and block out some time to study for my test. Or I have a paper due, I need to block out some time for that. So like, like I said, just find what works for you. So planning ahead is the key to being successful because if you don't plan ahead and you forget that you have that assignment due, you're gonna wake up that morning and you're gonna probably write your paper in one hour and probably get a C or an F on it. But if you plan ahead and take the time to prepare, then you're gonna do better and get better grades. Okay, and allow some time for flexibility and unexpected. Um, also, schedule time to relax. It's important that, like I said, that you have that balance. So you wanna plan for like some downtime. You know, it's okay for you guys to go to the movies or if you're into gaming, schedule some time for that and just allow yourself to have some downtime so you're not just focusing just on grades in school because it's a really easy way to get burnout if that's all that you're focusing on. So just make sure that you have fun, schedule time for football games, um, theater, movie night, um, whatever it might be. Like it, um, the key is just that you learn to find balance so that you're developing as an individual and that you're also succeeding academically. So that's it on the time management. Give it back to Kevin. Awesome. Okay, so uh, we talked just a minute ago about you guys are, you're here, hopefully getting an education, thinking or in the hopes of making more money later on. What are you guys' financial goals? I mean, what are you guys wanting to do financially in your life? Give me some reasons you guys want to make money. I don't know. Guy's gonna live a life of retirement. How's that? Man. That's just comfort, a life of comfort. Exactly. What are the reasons we need to make money? Maybe if it's just this semester, what are some reasons? What are, you, what are some financial goals that you guys might have? Stay out of debt. Stay out of debt? Excellent. Excellent. We see today that um, uh, today's students are coming out of, of college and, in, and moving into adult life more in debt than any generation ever before. Mainly because of school, school expenses, but, um, but just paying those bills, right? How many of you guys want to buy a car at some point? Yeah? How many of you guys are driving mom's car? How many of you guys are driving grandma's car? Don't raise your hand. All right? At some point in time, we'd like to buy our own car, right? rather than drive the hand-me-down, the hand-me-down, the hand-me-down that our two sisters and our brother all drove when they were in high school. How many of you guys did, did that, right? You drove the, the beater all the way through school, right? Any of you guys here uh, having to pay for college on your own? You're on your own dime, okay? Some important things. How many of you guys are looking at transferring on to the university after you finish here at Eastern? Okay, who's gonna pay for that? Probably ourselves, right? Okay. At some point in time, do you guys want to live with grandma? You want to live with mom and dad? The basement's really cool. No? Probably want to buy our, our, buy our own place, right? Get an apartment somewhere. How about just paying our bills? 
I'll tell you guys right now, one of the most important things that you can do today to prepare yourself for future financial um, abilities is to learn how to pay your bills today. Pay your cell phone bill. Pay your insurance. Pay your car payment. Okay, there's a thing called a credit score. The higher your credit score and the better you pay your bills, the less it costs you to borrow money. So we just bought a couple cars a couple weeks ago. Uh, my daughter just bought her first car and then mama needed a new car because she saw the daughter's new car, right? So it was interesting to see the difference in the interest rates that we got for my daughter who's brand new, her very first car, she's buying it, and the interest rate that we got for ourselves because our credit score is so much higher than hers and hers is, is lower. So if you want to develop that credit score, start today paying your bills, okay? Pay them on time. Debt's not a bad thing, but making sure that we're paying those things on time is a great way to be able to do that. How many of you guys just want to buy something nice? Girls, is it time to go buy some shoes? So, it, isn't it always time to buy shoes? Is there ever a time that, the, 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 that that's not, is, right? Isn't that how we do that? Guys, aren't we the same way, though? We're kind of becoming, my wife tells me, would you stop buying shoes? It's because I have four daughters and a wife, so I've kind of gotten in contact and kind of in touch with my female side there, so. <laughs> Where did, my, where did my mentor go talk, talking about saving for retirement? Dude, where'd you go? Right? Saving for retirement. And finally, how many of you guys are here, or how many of you girls are here for your MRS degree? <laughs> Took you a second there, right? Okay? It takes a little bit of money to get started. Right? So saving for that marriage, saving for that ring. Um, some of those kinds of things. So there are some goals that we, that, that we need to think about there. So I threw a big word up here. I said maybe it's not a big word, a small word. But when I use the word budget, what's the first, what's the, what are coming some of those first feelings that you feel when we use the word budget? Are they, what's that? Having a plan. Having a plan? Okay. Are they good feelings or kind of restrictive feelings? They're not good feelings at all, are they? <laughs> exactly. Has your mom and dad been lecturing you forever? You need to create a budget. You need to live within your means. Don't spend more than you have. Right? Have you seen your credit card bill this month? All right? Budgets are a great thing. All right? We just talked about some goals, and each of you have your own individual goals financially of what you want to accomplish. But budgets allow us to be able to create a roadmap to those goals. Okay? I used to think that budgets were very constrictive. Don't tell me how to spend my money. I want to spend my money how I want to spend my money. But if I want to spend my money to buy a new car or to buy new shoes, I put it in the budget. And I allow myself to be able to do that so then I control how I'm spending my money rather than my money controlling where I'm going to be doing that. It helps us to make some of those decisions. Can I go out to eat with my friends tonight? Or do I have to pay for my cell phone bill tomorrow? Right? We talked about that plan ahead. Budgets allow us to be able to plan ahead and know exactly where we need to spend that money as well. How are we going to pay for those expenses? How are we going to budget those out? And we'll, talk, we'll go through a little bit of an exercise here in a moment about how do we plan ahead and know what we need to pay for and how we're going to pay for those. It also shows us where we're spending our money at. Have any of you ever tracked for an entire month every penny that you spent for that month? Yeah? And what'd you find? You spent a lot more. And were you blown away by where you spent that money? Yeah. Right? If I use the word so delicious, would you spend a lot of money there? Or Starbucks? Mm -hmm. Right? It would blow your mind the amount of money that we spend in areas that we, just, we think are just pocket change. All right? Helps us to identify where those are at. So this is, a, this is an example of a college budget. It's, a little, it's probably a little bit more detailed than we'd like, but it, kind of gives us a lot of flexibility of what to look at. So some things I want you to think about here is we need to know, before we can create our budget, how much do we have coming in this month? Now some of you guys have Pell Grants, right? Big chunk of money that went into your account all at once. Some of you, maybe you, mom and dad are sending you a chunk of money every month to take care of that. Maybe some of you are having to get work-study jobs, part-time jobs. Financially, however, we're making things work. You are limited on the amount of money that you have coming in each month, either from income, financial aid that may be coming in, and maybe even some allowance. We'll call it an allowance. We'll call it, we won't call it allowance. Allowance is for kids. You guys have a monthly stipend. 
Does that make it sound more, more like an adult, an, like an adult world there? All right? So you guys have a monthly stipend there that you're allowed to spend. So once we know what's coming in, then we have to figure out what's going out. Where do I have to spend my money? Right? Some of you guys are living on campus, so housing's taken care of and food's taken care of. Right? Anybody living off campus? Right? Got this little thing called rent, utilities, Wi-Fi. Because <laughs> we don't want to eat up our data plan, right? Okay? So we got rent, utilities, cell phones. You planning on eating while you're here? Yeah? Ramen noodles? Please don't eat ramen. I mean, they're not bad, but don't live on those, okay? How many of you guys are paying for your own car? Have your own automobile expenses? Need to change tires, gas, right? All of these things all have to be calculated in. Your don't worry about student loans. Those, are, don't, those don't kick in until later. Um, credit cards, insurance. Guys, please wash your laundry. Okay, there's a laundromat right around. You can only turn the shirt inside out so many times. Okay? Don't do that with the underwear. Okay? All right? So let's do your laundry. Haircuts. I won't, I won't get into haircuts. That, that's a long time ago. Um, entertainment. Right? Now there's a lot of things to do on campus. There's a few entertainment things to do here around town. We're a small town, so we have to get very creative. You figure out where you want to spend your money. The first things first, like we talked earlier, eat the big frog first, right? Put your big frogs in first. You have to have rent. You have to pay your, your, your utilities. You have to pay your car. You need to put some money in for groceries. And then we start to put the things, our discretionary income or our discretionary spending, then you can put that in where you want. Are, more, are shoes more important to you than eating really good? Do I want to have... Uh, my Apple Music, or do I want to have an actual cell phone? Where do I need to spend that at, and what's more and most important to me? If it's important to you, then put it in there, and then find a way to make it work. So the budget, you are in control of your budget. Now, if the budget doesn't work this month, if the budget doesn't work this month, then figure out what, what, where did I go wrong? Did I spend too much on entertainment and not enough on food? Did I go out to eat too much and did I not have enough for groceries? All right. So if this, work, if this month didn't work, next month, readjust some numbers. I probably spent too much on clothes. I probably spent too much eating out. So delicious, wiped out my, my account last month. Okay. Track those categories of where they're at. See where you're at. And if we need to adjust, then adjust some dollars around. If you had more money left over in groceries, and you didn't really need it, then shift that over to another place that maybe you want to do more of, but you kept yourself in control. Does this make sense to you? Yeah? Are you seeing now how you're the controller of the budget and the budget is not the controller of you? It's your money. I want you to spend it where you want. Just make sure that we're taking care of those big things first and spending it where it needs to be. Now let's talk about I skipped over one key part here. I skipped over one part here on the financial aid. If you guys got a Pell Grant, or maybe mom and dad said, I'm going to put $1,000 in your account for the semester. Or maybe you got $700 left over on your Pell Grant, and it's now sitting on your, your, your green card. What are those called? Your, uh, EAC your EAC debit card. OK. You got this big chunk of money. What do we normally do when we have a lot of money? Don't we go spend it? We're like, oh my gosh, I am so rich. I'm going to go out and buy a big screen TV. I'm going to go buy all these new clothes. I'm going to go buy this new gaming system. And then what happens when November, mid-October, November gets here? And you're out of money. What happens in your office about mid-October, yeah. November? We do have students that will come in about in November and asking, is there any more grant money? Are there any more scholarships? Is there anything I can get? Because they've spent all their money. So when you get your scholarship money, your Pell Grant money, or that money from mom and dad, remember it's for the whole semester, and you've got a plan and budget, so it's going to last you all the way until December, because your next Pell Grant or scholarship payout is not going to come until January if you come back to school. So budgeting is going to help you get through the semester, 
It's going to help you plan. And like Kevin said, it, it gives you choices and it does give you freedom. A lot of people hear the word budget and they think it's something negative, but you're choosing where to spend your money. But you just got to plan and budget so that you make sure that you have enough to do everything that you want to do. Exactly. So if you got that $1,000, you know that you're going to be here for five months, you have $200 a month that you can spend out of that. Mm -hmm. All right, simple math, just break it out and then only pull that certain amount out that you need to get through that month. All right, so set up your categories. You're in charge of your categories. I'm not gonna tell you where to spend it or how to spend it. You define your categories. How much you're gonna put in those, record those expenses, and then at the end of the month, how did I do? Where do I wanna adjust it? And then make it fit towards. Next semester, when you guys are here as second year freshmen, you guys are gonna be like budgeting wizards, right? You're going to be totally, totally, totally crushing it there. So a few things for you that Tracy's going to talk to you about control. All right, just well. some checking account basics. So you guys are in college now. And with that comes with most banks, a college checking account. So I don't know if you know that or not, but if you tell your bank that you're in college, then you can get into a free checking account that doesn't have monthly fees. If you use checkbooks, you're still going to have to buy your checks, but they're not going to charge you a monthly fee for banking with them. So there's usually no minimum balance because they know that you're in college and your balance is going to go up and down and you're going to have times where maybe you only have five dollars in your account some banks will charge you a fee if your balance drops too low but on a college checking account no monthly fee no minimum balance and it also comes with the free online banking and the mobile banking and then the free atms so another tip is you might how many people in here are from out of town like a lot of you. Okay, so you might wanna choose a bank that is also where, you, where you're from. So then when you go home on breaks, the bank is there, the ATMs are there. Or if mom and dad need to help you out, it's easy for them to get to the bank. So I'd recommend choosing a bank that is here locally and also one that is from the town that you came from. So that would just be another tip. Okay, so part of that budget is keeping track of your balance. So you need to Watch what's in your balance. Um, a lot of banks will ask you to get set up on like the overdraft protection. Has anybody heard of the overdraft protection? Do you understand what it is? They set up a savings account and when your checking account gets low, they will conveniently transfer money from savings into checking, but they charge a fee. It's not free. So you don't wanna get in the habit of letting the bank transfer your money. You want to be aware of how much money you have in your account so that you're not overspending. And then you also don't want to have a negative balance because they're gonna charge you fees for that. So monitor your checking account. A great way to do that is to set up text alerts. Does everybody here bank with their phone? Like do you have the app on your phone? Most of you probably do. You can set up text alerts. So if your balance ever gets below $50, the bank is gonna text you and say, your balance is below $50. So that's when you're gonna have to try to figure out what expenses do I have this month? If it's gonna go more than, than $50, then you're gonna to have to figure something out. So make sure you get that. And my favorite one is to set up the deposit, the deposit alert. So anytime I get paid or money gets put into my account, I get a little alert remind, you know, just showing me how much money went in. So then you, you can have that comfort of knowing your direct deposit went in or your paycheck has shown up if you're doing work study or part-time jobs. So those are just some banking tips that can help save you money. Um, I really, really discourage overdraft protection because they do charge you and just don't spend more than you have. All right, fast the facts. So I don't know if, um, I'm sure we have some people in here that have applied for FAFSA, but some of you may not have done that yet. Um, the application is free and it's not too late to apply. Um, the semester is starting next week, so we won't have you processed in time to like pay for your classes and do tuition. But once the semester has started, you can still do your FAFSA and we can still pay you your Pell Grant money. So I just wanna make sure you guys know it's not too late. And FAFSA is for full-time and part-time students. We have a lot of students that come in and think they can't get FAFSA because they're only taking three credits or six credits. You can still get Pell Grant money and you can still, if you're three credit, in three credits or six credits you just get less money because we pay you based on how many credits that you're in. So just, you know, if you have friends that are part-time and they think they can't get the Pell Grant, just let them know that if you're part-time, you can still get your Pell Grant funds. 
And just a reminder that Pell Grant is very similar to a scholarship. There are academic standards, so you have to maintain a 2.0 GPA, and you have to pass 67% of your classes. So if you get in the habit of withdrawing and dropping your classes, eventually you're not going to be eligible for Pell Grant funds because we want you to be successful. We want you to graduate. So stay in your classes, get at least a 2.0, and then that'll keep you on track to reach your goal of getting your degree. And we're always there to help. So if you have any questions, give us a call or stop by the financial aid office. 67% sounded like my grade in about half my classes in college. So. <laughs> well, no, so you have to pass 67%. Oh, you have to pass the class. All right. Yeah, what you have say? to pass. Say so C's you... get degrees. Is that what it's yeah. called, right? Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. Okay. So how many of you guys are like totally socially prepared and ready to rock college? Yeah? My baseball players are always ready to go, man. It's just that's how we roll, right? Cool. Okay, so there's this old adage that, is, that we use in college that's uh, been going around forever. We're going to teach you actually how to, how to combat this. Grades. Which two do you want? Our social life and grades? Well, hope you don't, hope you're like a vampire, right? <laughs> okay. Or is uh, the uh, sleep and grades more important? and absolutely no social life. Which one do you want? Which one are you going to give up? What are we here for? School. So are we going to sacrifice grades? We don't want to sacrifice grades because we're also sacrificing potential financial aid. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be there. So now we have to find a balance between the other two, right? Okay. So let's talk about some of these things for just a few moments. Okay. So I think it's balanced. So Kevin and I were talking about this sleep, grades, or social life. I couldn't pick just two. I'd have to have all three. So I think it's a little bit about finding that balance so that you can be successful in all those areas. But there's a lot to take advantage of here on campus. And the great thing is that it's free. So you can go to the games for free if you have your student ID, if you're a full-time student, and all of the theater, um, productions that they put on, all the music productions, you can go to that. There's a lot of clubs that have student activities, so get out there. Don't be afraid to try something new and just get out there and get involved because that's how you're going to make friends and that's how you're going to create the memories about your good old college days. So, How many of you guys liked who you were in high school? Are you satisfied to be who you were in high school from here on out? How many of you guys are ready to reinvent yourselves? ready to become somebody new. This is your chance. This is your opportunity that whatever was on, whoever you were in high school, if it was the band geek, right? Okay, the wrestling nerd, whatever you want to, the bubble bouncers, the baseball players, the, the whatever it was, whatever group you were associated with, right? The chess club president, whatever it might have been. This is your chance to either continue to be who that is, or if you didn't like that experience, it's time for you now to be able to recreate yourself and to be who you really want to be in the long term. And get out of your comfort zone. Don't Absolutely. Be, you know, don't be afraid to go try something new. So you need to have a social life, all right? We're going to talk a lot. Your grades are very important, but what's also very important is for you to figure out who you are while you're here, all right? Having a social life and getting out and enjoying what's going on around campus is going to give you a huge amount of stress relief. If all you're doing is sleeping in grades, sleeping in school, sleeping and studying, and no social life, blood pressure is going to go up. Your health is going to decline. You're not going to be doing well. Your grades are probably going to suffer more because there's no, there's no release valve for you. All right. So we want you to get out and go out and do some things that maybe you've never tried before. Go sign up for a club. Go participate in a new group. Go to the football games. Go to the basketball games. There are activities. When you take a look at the activity calendar, either online or on, in, your, in, your, uh, uh, in your school calendars, it will blow you away with how many activities are going to go on on this campus over the course of the next six months. All right? So get involved in those. Find study partners. Some of my best friends in life are those that we sat in my living room around my little coffee table with a black and white television with the, with the, the Phoenix Suns playing, and the TV was so bad that it was adjusted so their feet ran across the top of the screen. But we would sit there and we did all of our statistics, our finite math. We spent hours sitting around that, studying that class together. No, I'm not 
I hate math, and I took way more math classes than I should have been allowed to in college. But not that I love math now, but those friends that I made by sitting around and studying with them not only got me through the class, but have now become lifetime friends because of that process. So find study partners, yeah. people that you can bounce ideas off with. And have them check your work and you check their yeah. work. Well, in a study group also, what I found when I use study groups is it committed me to studying. When I had a group that I had scheduled time to go meet with and study, and if I wasn't there, they'd call and say, hey, where are you? So it kind of commits you to studying and helps you get it done, and it makes it a little bit more fun. Also, take advantage of the Student Learning Center. They're there, they're there to help you. The, the, the college has so many tutors that you can use for free and just use them. I mean, it's not going to cost you anything but a little bit of time. So make sure you take advantage of those. All right. How many of you guys are really worried about just messing this whole thing up? Yeah? It is. It's scary, isn't it? Right? I never lived away from home until I came down here to college. And let's just say there are times I wish I could kind of expunge that first year both off of my life record and off of my school record, all right? But we're gonna give you some tips on how to make sure that you guys do well, okay? First thing, don't do anything easy, all right? Don't look for the easy English teacher. Don't look for the, English, the, the easy math teacher. Do some things that are hard. This is your opportunity to learn about yourself. And if we just do the easy things, then you're not going to get out of this college experience what you really deserve to have out of this college experience. And you're preparing to move on to the next level, um, whether it's a university or like English 101 to English 102. I took English 101 and I didn't do probably, like pay attention as much as I should have. So then when I got to English 102, I was like, oops, now I'm not prepared for English 102. So if you wanna be prepared, and um, like Kevin said, don't always choose the easy teacher or the easy class or whatever class you're in, no matter who the teacher is, just do your best and apply yourself and make sure that you're learning and getting the most out of your college experience. All right. Choose subjects that you care about. All right. Don't just take a class because that's what's expected of you. Find a major, find classes that you have a great amount of interest in and, and, are, and can be passionate about because this is going to be a lifelong career for you, and I don't want you to continue to do things. Now, is, is changing a major a bad thing? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's I just guarantee you, every one of us, I changed mine three times. <laughs> right? And that's OK. Start off okay. as a music major. Came down here, music major, year and a half, realized I don't want to play clarinet for the rest of my life. Right? Played jazz, still do, but it just wasn't what I wanted to do for a living. Didn't want to be a high school band director. So I switched and went over to business. And I've absolutely loved, loved doing it. One of the best things I did. All right? So find subjects that you care about. When you care about it, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to learn more. You're going to, going to want to do more as part of that. Level up your social life. All right? If you were a loner in high school, you don't have to be a loner in college. All right? If you didn't have very many friends or had a really difficult time in those situations, that's all over with. That's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch, right? Boop, boop, boop. It's all over with and done. We get to draw, start to draw now a brand new picture for what we're doing now. So level that up. Try everything within means, OK? <laughs> I want you guys to try things that you've never done before. If you want to sign up for one of the clubs, one of the groups, one of the activities that are going on, intramurals, go sign up for marching band. If you want to go be in the choir, try things that you've never done before, OK? I want you to experience life. We want you to experience all those things. Now, with that being said, I don't want you to walk away from any of those values or beliefs or things that you hold very important to you that you've been raised in. Don't walk away from those. All right? That's who you are, and that's who you need to continue to be. So you hang on to those things, but I want you to try things that help you to learn more about who you are and what you truly enjoy and what you want to become as you work through life. Work beyond the course. Don't just do the minimum requirements. If you're in World of Music and uh, you're studying Beethoven or Mozart or whoever it might be, and you might think, oh, this is kind of cool. Go jump on Apple Music and download some Beethoven if that's what you're into. And right? the difference between like an average person and an exceptional person is the exceptional person is the one that goes beyond. So you guys want to be exceptional. You want to apply yourself the most that you can and do, you know, go the extra mile and do the extra extra work. Absolutely. And then finally, remember that this college is not 
all about just getting a degree. We talk about grades, and grades are very, very important, and you need to get good grades, all right? But most importantly, college is about figuring out who you are as a person, learning about what you like and what you don't like. And you're now on your own. You're now adults. It's time for you now to start to act like that adult and to find out what do you really want to be as you move forward through life. So try everything. Get out and try some things that, that you've never done before. Step out of the high school life and now get into the adult life and start to enjoy those things that are out there for you. So um, this is your chance to really figure out who that is. So make the most of it and enjoy it.